I'm going to show you how to make Mr Bones and here's the in the hoop large applique skeleton from Creative Kiwi for this I'm going to be using a 4x4 hoop two layers of wash away stabilizer per hooping and there are six hoopings some masking tape pins with heads two matching bobbins and threads one for the uh, stitch detail of the skeleton and the other for the satin stitch border my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size you'll find a link to this design in the video description below we're going to start off by hooping our two layers of wash away stabilizer so place them over the outside hoop then insert the inside hoop and then we're going to pin around the top edge of the inner hoop and that's going to prevent our um, stabilizer from being pulled down between the two hoop pieces take your pin rest it on top of the inside hoop push it through bring it back round through the stabilizer again and that's going to anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides the larger your hoop the more pins you will use it's important that we stitch the files in order and file number one is the shin bones and the feet so load that file into your machine along with your neutral bobbin and thread color and then we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for our batting place your batting over the outline and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut your stitches We're now going to place our front and back fabric and we're going to start with the back if turn your hoop over place your backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place we're now going to do the same on the front pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure both fabrics making sure that you've got your thread color loaded into your machine for the bone details you're now going to stitch round number four You're now going to trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care of course not to cut your stitches load your matching bobbin and thread color for the satin stitch border into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number five I'm going with a light beige for this so that's the lower leg stitched we can now free this from the hoop 
turn your hoop over, trim around the edge of the stitch line taking care not to cut any of the stitches. And that's our feet complete and we can set them aside for the minute. We're now going to stitch the second hooping. So load file two into your machine and that's the hips and thigh bones. You want to load your matching bobbin and thread, um, your neutral matching bobbin and thread into your machine as well. Then you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as you did for the previous hooping. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. As before I'm using a darker thread so that you can see what I'm doing. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. We're now going to trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care of course not to cut our stitches. We're now going to place our fabrics, so turn your hoop over, place your backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Load your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the bone details into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number four. We're now going to trim up the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over, trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching into your machine. Then we're going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag all the way around uh, the outside leaving the areas where we have got joins. So here and here for the next hooping. So that's the zigzag stitching complete. Before we go any further, we're just going to trim up along the raw edges here so that when we place it on onto our hoop, it all sits nicely. So you're going to trim close to the stitch line where there's no satin stitching. So our next job is to position the two bones to the bottom of his thigh bones here. I'm going to turn this around so that I can see what I'm doing. You're going to sit these stitch line, these stitch lines here, sorry, on top of these stitch lines here between um, where the zigzag stitching stops. And then we're going to tape it in place. 
And do the same with the other leg. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag over these two areas and join the previous segment to this one. Just remove your hoop from your machine and check your joins to make sure that you're happy with them. If you're not, you can unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your um, lower leg secure it and stitch round number six again if you're happy with it you're now going to stitch round number seven and that's going to do the satin stitching around uh, the uh, thigh and hips So now that we've finished stitching the second hooping, we're now going to free this from the hoop. Take care, of course, not to cut off um, your lower legs. And that's our second hooping complete and we can set our work aside for the minute. We're now going to stitch the third hooping. So load file 3 into your machine and that's his chest along with your neutral matching bobbin and thread. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as we have done so previously. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give us our place and outline for the batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitch line of course. We're now going to add our fabrics, starting with the backing fabric, so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the bone detail into your machine and then stitch round number four. Now going to trim away the excess fabric both back and front of the hoop so turn the hoop over and trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches. making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around here and it will leave these areas here, here, here and here um, raw. We're now going to join our previous segment to this one but just before we do I'm just going to trim up along here so that uh, I can get a nice neat join. So you're now going to place this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between where the zigzag stitching stops. 
I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. And then you're going to tape it in place. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six. And that's going to do a zigzag stitch along here and join the two segments together. Remove your hoop from your machine and just check that you're happy that there's no edges poking out or anything like that. If you're happy with it, you're going to stitch round number seven and that's going to do the satin stitching around here. If you're not happy with it, then you unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your previous segment, reposition it, then secure it and then stitch round number six again. I'm happy with mine so I'm now going to stitch round number seven. Now that we've finished stitching the third segment we can now free this from the hoop and take care not to cut your previous segments. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge of the stitch line. And we're just going to trim up where the next pieces are going to join to this one. So the arms and the neck. And that's our third segment complete and we can set it aside for the minute. We now come to the fourth hooping so load file 4 into your machine along with your neutral bobbin and thread colour. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as you have done previously and then we're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for our batting. Now just to save any confusion, when you look at your uh, skeleton, we're going to do the right hand side arm. That's our right, not his right. His left, our right. So when you're ready, pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one. Place your batting over the outline and then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitch line. We're now going to place our fabrics, so turn your hoop over, place your backing fabric over the outline and tape it in place. We'll now do the same on the front. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them. making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread for the bone detail loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number four. You're now going to trim up the excess fabric both back and front, so turn your hoop over and trim away, taking care not to cut your stitches. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching into your machine. Pop your hoop in and then stitch round number five and that's going to do the zigzag stitching around the raw edge. We're now going to join our previous segment to this one by aligning this stitch line here 
on top of this stitch line here and the arm is supposed to come across the body so don't worry if it's tucked under for now and tape it in place then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six now it's going to zigzag along this join and join the two segments together remove your hoop to check your join make sure that you're happy with it if you're not unpick the zigzag stitching reposition your um, uh, torso secure it and stitch round number six again if you're happy with um, your join we just need to make sure that we move this out of the way because we're now going to do the satin stitching around the arm and we don't want it stitching through here so I'm just going to pop a little pin just to hold that out of the way and make sure you keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven now that the stitching is finished we can now free this from the hoop so work from the back of your hoop and take care not to cut your segments hidden underneath and that's our fourth segment complete and we can now set our work aside for the minute We're now going to do the fifth hooping. So load file five into your machine, that's his other arm, along with your neutral thread. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabilizer. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one, and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. Place your batting over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting, taking care not to cut your stitches. We're now going to place the backing fabric, so turn your hoop over. Place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place now do the same on the front pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them I'm very sorry I've just had a technical problem and the previous clip hasn't recorded load your matching bobbin and thread color for the bone detail into your machine and then stitch round number four and that will give you this the same as for the other arm we're now going to trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over and taking care not to cut your stitches trim around the edge of the stitch line load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching into your machine and then we're going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag around the edge of the arm we're now going to join the torso to the arm so line this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stops and tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag along here and join the two segments together we're now just going to move this out the way a little bit so that it doesn't interfere with the stitching of the hand I'm just going to pop a pin in here 
make sure that you keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line make sure that you keep this bit out of the way of the, the shoulder as well now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the arm So that's the stitching finished on the fifth segment so we're now going to turn this over and free it from the hoop. Take care of course not to cut your segments that are hidden underneath. And that's our fifth segment completed and we can set our work foot aside for the minute. We're now going to do the sixth hooping, which is the head. There are two options for the larger sizes, so five by seven and upwards. There's the hat version and there's just the head. This, uh, the hat option is not available for the four by four because it simply wouldn't fit into the hoop. So we're not going to be doing um, a hat with this one. Load file number six into your machine along with your neutral bobbin and thread. Hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabilizer. Then pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you your place and outline for your batting. If you wish to place a hanging loop, there's a marker here for it. Place your ribbon, cord or whatever. I've got a little piece of thin cord here over the line and then tape it in place and place your batting over the top and tape that in place as well pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches of course. And don't cut off your uh, hanging loop either. Up to now we've been placing the backing fabric um, down at the same time as the front, but this time I'm not. You can if you want to and you'll end up with a face each side when you're finished but I'm just going to have the face on one side of the skeleton so I'm going to be placing my backing fabric a bit later on so for now I'm just going to place my front fabric over the outline and tape it in place then we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure it load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the bone features of the skull into your machine and then stitch round number four. If you haven't put the backing on then you don't need to use a matching bobbin. We're now going to stitch round number four. We're now going to add our backing fabric so turn your hoop over, place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure it. We're now going to trim away the excess fabric from both back and front of the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim away taking care not to cut your stitches. Load your matching bobbin and thread colour for the satin stitching into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag the edge. We're now going to join his neck to the head 
I'm going to turn this on the side so that I can see what I'm doing. You're going to sit this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between where the zigzagging stops. I'm trying to take a moment just to make sure that you've got him nice and square. And then we're going to tape him in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to zigzag along the join and join the two segments together. Just as we have done before, remove your hoop from your machine. Just check that you're happy with your join and that the body of the skeleton sits nice and straight to the head. If you're happy with it, you can now stitch round number eight and that's going to do the satin stitching around the edge of the head. If you're not happy with it, then unpick the zigzag stitching, reposition the, uh, the body Resecure it and then stitch round number seven again. We're now going to stitch round number eight. So that's our sixth segment completed. I've removed the tape. I'm just going to pull this forward and tape it down to the skull. That way, when I trim around the edge, I'm not going to accidentally cut off my loop. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge. And take care, of course, not to cut your segments underneath either. All we need to do now is remove the excess stabilizer from around the edges and on the back of the skeleton. So take some warm water and a cotton bud and I'm going to start on the back and go along all the joins first. Dip your cotton bud in the warm water and just wipe around the edge. So there's the back and there's the front. He's not going to fit the other way around so I'm going to leave him on the side. And that's Mr Bones finished. I hope you enjoyed this stitch along. If you did please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published. Do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group. There's always lots of ideas, help and inspiration there for everybody. And thank you very much for joining me. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and there's some new discount codes for you as well.